a picture. Right, today I want you to teach me, um, I'm privately trained, and I want you to teach me uh, pedestrian crossings and use of signals. Right, okay. Any questions on it before you go into uh, the brief? Mm, no. I'll, I'll just give you a couple of guidelines uh, so you don't get bogged down. It's two subjects, but remember I have been using signals. Right. Yeah. Um, you will need to talk about the arm signals and hopefully give me a demonstration. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important to listen to the word picture. On a day like today, the examiner may well say, teach me signals by indicator only, yeah? Right. If he says that, then I would do the demonstrations of the arm signals stationary, but you don't need to do them on the move. Um, but if if he says teach me pedestrian crossings and use the signals and he, and he doesn't say uh, by indicator only then you must cover the arm and we must cover them on the move yeah right and I would say where where Luton test centre is I would probably get the arm signals for right and left out of the way very quickly yeah right and then the I'll finish with then yeah okay So it's more <coughs> on the signals. It's going to uh, apart from the arm signals. It's going to be more kind of just uh, uh, Q and A here yeah? on the brief, yeah. Right. Um, the main thing with signals we're looking for is uh, timings, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll hand over to you. Oh, okay, then, Tony. Uh, my name is Barry. I'm going to take this lesson. Hello, oh, Barry. How are you? All right. All right. Oh, I'm okay, thank you. A bit chilly, but apart from that. Right, um, okay then, um, on the use of signals, have you used hand signals very much at all? Or? No, I, I've never used hand signals. You no. haven't used them no. yet, okay. Okay, if we start with those first of all then, um, have you ever ridden a bike? Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember what signals you gave on your push bike if you wanted to turn right, for instance? Oh, oh I was stuck my hand here to the right. Okay, well basically, that's what we're doing for, for the car. You sit in your normal driving position. Yeah. Obviously, with the window open, what you do is you put your hand straight out. You want to practice it? Yeah, you can practice that. Yeah. Okay, so if you put your hand out with your thumb, with your hand sort of um, vertical. So. Oh, I'm always worried about doing that because the last time you know, I remember I was riding my bike, I stuck my hand out <laughs> and uh, you know you got knocked off by that. That's right. Yeah. Thing. Well, on the move. It's important we check our mirrors first to make sure there's no one coming up well, the outside. Only, uh, just coming out of the road, it's not only on the move. No, it should be all the time, shouldn't it? You wouldn't want to punch someone in the face, yeah. would you? Yeah, I mean, if we're, if we're doing the practice, um, yeah, it's important to cover that. Exactly the same, yeah? Right. Okay, so what we do before we put our, our arm out, we just check the mirror all right. and make sure there's no policeman coming up on his push bike no, or a big lorry right. coming past. Yeah, okay. Flow. And we put our, just sit in your normal driving position, put yeah. your, you might need to open your window a little bit more. Then just put your hand, put your arm out straight with your hand a little bit lower than that. That's it. Now put, move your thumb to the top so your your, your palm is facing forwards. All right, yeah. Okay, and that's that would be the, the indication for turning right. All right, how long will I hold there for ten minutes? Just for a couple of seconds, just to re let people know what you're going to do. A couple of seconds. But perhaps five seconds or so. Three. Should, three seconds. Yeah. And that should be enough to reinforce what you're going to do. Right. Okay. If you're going to turn to the left and you want to indicate that, you put your no, heart... that's easy, I like that one. That's if you're on your push bike, unfortunately this is slightly oh, different. Alright, right. Although it, if there's a policeman in front, you okay. can use that. Okay. If you put your hand back out, yeah. Yeah, in the position it was, alright. Now if you turn it uh, anti-clockwise, about the size of a dinner plate, so rotate your arm anti-clockwise, right. about the size yeah. of a dinner yeah. plate, you might need your window open just a fraction more to do it, but yeah, that, that's yeah. basically your, your slowing down. Again, do that for about three or four. That's a bit hard to remember anti-clockwise, isn't it? Uh, do it. Um, oh, I suppose. Uh, oh, the way the steering wheel turns. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah so anyway, the way you turn left yeah. on the steering. Okay. Now, for slowing down, put your arm out again, but the difference is this time you want your hand horizontal, so your horizontal the palm of your hand is facing the ground. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all you do is move it up and down. All right. But yeah, but a little bit. Yeah. Bend you down as you go down. But 
Uh, and again, that'll tell anyone behind that you're intended to slow down or stop. Yeah, it's a bit like patting my dog, isn't it? <laughs> very, very similar. Okay, these, are, these aren't to replace your indicator signals, but we use them to reinforce what you're going to do. So if you was going to turn right, you, you might just reinforce the driver behind you while putting your hand out to turn I right. I've never seen anybody use them. I don't really necessarily know this. Um, they're not used very much, but they're, they're handy to know. You, you, you may, on a drive home, find your indicators fail or the fuse goes and you've got no indicators. So although you shouldn't be driving without indicators if the fuse was to blow. What a help, because where my brother lives, and I go there quite often, uh, he lives in a house on, you know, on the right hand side of the road just before you get to this uh, roundabout and every time I'm indicating you know I've driven there on, on a couple of my lessons to get dropped off there and when I'm indicating to, uh, to turn in there everybody seems to get a shock when I turn into the drive yeah that's right um, you can reinforce your signal as I say because if you're indicating people assume that you're going to go to the roundabout and round so if you've got two junctions close to each other just by putting your hand out just before the first junction, for oh, instance, right, right. that can help reinforce that that's actually where you're going to go. Okay. Um, again, very, very important, you must use your mirrors before you do any of these signals. Right. Okay. Now, talking about signals, it's important we get the, the timing correct as well. So if, for instance, there was a parked car like here, and we've got a, a road there and a road there, and you want to turn right into the second road, if you were to signal too early, first of all, people would get confused as to whether you're going to turn into that road. All oh, right, yeah. They may think you're only overtaking the parked car and not turning into there. All oh, right. So what we need to do is, in a situation like this, we wouldn't signal too early because we don't want to mislead people into thinking we're turning into that road. We don't possibly, again, depends on the circumstances, but by positioning the car just to the left of the centre of that line as we approach this car, we may not need to indicate that we're going to overtake it. In which case, we would put our indicator on roughly level with that car, just before we get level with that car, to turn right. Sorry, I didn't know what you meant there. Uh, so so as, as, we, as we just approach this car, once we're, say, level with this kerb, if we then put a right indicator on then, that would reinforce that we're going to turn right. And you may also need to put your right arm out yeah, just so people are aware that you're turning right and you're not overtaking that car. So oh, by, right, by right. putting your arm out the window there, yeah. okay. that's reinforcing yeah. that you are turning right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, we've got to be very careful. Yeah, 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 try and not repeat yourself too much because yeah. otherwise you're going to be long yeah, break. Right. Okay, on the pedestrian crossings, if you've had much experience of them, I'll take it you've used them a few times as a pedestrian. Uh, we've, yeah, we've been a, uh, yeah, we've been across a few, but uh, you just talked me through them. All right, okay then. Well, with the pedestrian crossing, first thing we do when we see one in the distance, it, it is a hazard, so the first thing we must do is check our mirrors. All right. And just see what the position is of any cars behind, because we may need to stop. Yeah. So if, if we've got cars close behind, then we'll obviously need to perhaps cover the brake to bring our speed down in case we need to stop. So we'll come off the gas, cover the brake, we then scan the crossing. We're looking for any pedestrians that may use the crossing. Right. Yes. Yeah. Bearing in mind they might also dash out side roads or if they're walking along they might suddenly be in a rush and run to the crossing. Right. It's important that we don't overtake on the zigzags and we mustn't stop or park anywhere within the zigzag or the crossing. So if you're in a queue of traffic, you mustn't stop on the crossing itself. So if there's queues, when you get there you stop. Once there's a gap, you then carry on over the crossing and join the queue there, okay? Because that's an offence. How do I know where it's stopping? Good point. We've got these lines across here. Right. Okay? And that's where you mustn't, st you must stop the car there. Now we can, I'll show you the reference point when we're on the move, so that we don't encroach over that line and frighten anyone that's on the crossing. Why well, is that important? It's very important, because if you've got uh, someone crossing the road and you come over the, the, uh, the line, they may think you're not going to stop is why we keep our speed down and we do a gentle stop at that line. We don't right. go over the no, Is that the only reason then? Well, it's a, it's a legal requirement as well. Is it? It's an offence to be over, stop oh. on that crossing. Well, I wouldn't go to prison, would I? You never know. You could certainly get um, penalty points. Oh, would I? How many? You'd get three. Oh, right. And if you only passed your test, you can only okay, that'd yeah. be your last attempt. Yeah, um, if, you, if you notice, I'm just trying to get information yeah. out of you that's useful to me, yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind with these upper crossings, <coughs> if there's an island in the middle, you treat it as two separate crossings. So in this situation here, if someone's waiting to cross, 
you don't stop on, if you're going this oh, way. Right, yeah. Yeah. If, okay, if you do that, you might get a car ram from behind because yeah. he's not expecting it right. to stop. The other thing we don't do is when we stop, we don't beckon people over. We yeah. stop and let them decide whether they, it's safe for them to cross. We might stop, if you beckon them over, there, there might be a car or, or a motorbike that you haven't seen coming this way. Right. And you might be inviting them into danger. Right, the other sort of crossing we've got is a light controlled crossing. So it's not a zebra crossing. Uh, these are pelican crossings and puffing crossings. And on these, the pedestrian pushes the button yeah. and that will change to, to green for them and red for us. So we have to stop oh, right. on the red yeah. light. Yeah. Okay. On the um, on the puffing crossings, when they press the button, you'll see a little tiny red light come on on the bottom, and that will tell you as you approach that someone's pushed the button, and the light may change to red for oh, us. Right, right. Okay. The um, I, again, if there's um, an island on these crossings, if it's a straight crossing, then it acts as one crossing. Oh, so right. Unlike a pedestrian crossing. Yeah. It is one crossing. Oh, okay, right. If it's a staggered one where the pedestrian has to go to the central refuge, then walk along and use a second one, that's a separate crossing. Right. Okay. Um, on the pelican crossings, the lights have a, a flashing amber. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. When they, the time sequence is finished. Now, if there's no one on the crossing by then, it's if it's safe, you may proceed. All right. If not, you have to wait until it goes to green, and then, if it's safe, you can proceed. But it's important to look around and make sure that no one's running for the crossing, anything like that. On the pelican crossing, that has a little sensor which, find, which, work, which uh, picks up if anyone's on the crossing or oh, waiting right. for the crossing. Yeah. So what happens there is it doesn't go to flashing amber, but what happens is if, if it detects that the crossing is clear, it then shortens the sequence and turns the lights to green. Right. If, if it's an elderly person, it will keep the lights on red longer yeah. while they cross. Again, when it goes to green, importantly, have a good look around, make sure it is safe to proceed. If there's people about to cross, then don't, don't, enter, don't, don't start. There's also uh, another sort of crossing, which is a toucan crossing, and that's for pedestrians and cyclists to cross. Oh, right. Okay. If you come across those, I'll point those out. Right. And we also get a pegasus crossing, which are a little bit more in rural areas, and that's designed for people on horses to cross the road oh, as right. well. Okay, but in all of these situations, very very important check your mirrors as you approach these. Okay, but, so we'll go over it as we uh, right. as, as we go along. So yeah, because I know my brother, he's always always taking cyclists on approach for these um, crossings within the zigzag. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll tell him off about that tonight. You can overtake cyclists, you mustn't overtake motorised vehicles oh, on right, these crossings. Right. Oh, so he's not, not actually... Uh, he's not a, um, breaking, the law, breaking the law there. If he, if he stops at the crossing, then he's breaking the law by overtaking, because you mustn't overtake any vehicle that stops oh, at the right. pedestrian oh, crossing. Okay. So oh. on the approach, you can overtake anything if it's not motorised. Oh, okay. It gets a bit confusing, but the safest thing is not to overtake if you can help it. But certainly cars you don't overtake, cyclists you can, with caution. All right. Okay. But again, any of these circumstances arise. Okay. But if a if a cyclist has stopped at the line, it's normally to let someone over. Oh, okay. Why you don't overtake right. a cyclist? Yeah. Okay. So okay. should we go and find some crossings?